In previous videos we have looked at creating actions in the input system asset, scripting for the input system and adding mobile controls for character movement. In this video we are going to look at using the input system alongside the UI toolkit to navigate collections of buttons in the UI menu example, then switch left and right button collections on or off with gamepad shoulder buttons. I have created a new blank project in Unity 6. Go to Window and open the Package Manager. Ensure that Input System is installed from the Unity Registry and using at least version 1.9 or above. In this series I am using version 1.11. If you want to follow along with this project, install Cinemachine version 3 and you can find the asset pack to install from the video description below. If you have already downloaded the asset pack from a previous video, reopen your project to follow along with this video. Go to Scenes and open the UI menu scene. The artwork is taken from the Dragon Crashers URP 2D sample project which is available on the Unity Asset Store. The UI document is using a UI Toolkit Source Asset which you can double click to open. Each of the buttons must have a unique name so we can access them in code. It has a USS style of focus which tints the button green when selected. During play mode, without any code, you will notice that arrow keys, WASD and gamepad left stick or D-pad will already allow you to navigate all the buttons. Enter on keyboard or button south on gamepad is used to press the buttons, but they currently do nothing. We will create a script that allows us to interact with the buttons. Create a new script called UI script. Ensure it is using the UI elements namespace. Create 8 variables of button for each of the 8 buttons in the UI document. Create 2 arrays for button set 1 and button set 2, each containing 4 entries. That will allow us to switch between the two sets later. In an await method, add a visual element variable called root and get the UI document component, passing the root visual element into the variable. This gives us access to everything in the UI document we just looked at earlier. For the button, use root Q, which stands for query, to search for a button type with the name of the button to find. This should match the exact name of the button in the UI document. Do the same for the other buttons. Then pass the buttons into the first array. Do the same for the second set of buttons. Create an onEnable method and run a function called button action subscribe. Create an onDisable method and run a function called button actions unsubscribe. Create the button action subscribe function to subscribe to the button presses. When the sword button is clicked, subscribe to a custom function called on sword button clicked. Do the same for the other buttons. Create the button actions unsubscribe function to unsubscribe from the button clicks by adding a minus equals instead of a plus equals. Create the custom function for on sword button clicked and run another function using a lambda. This function returns a string reference to the button that was clicked. You can, however, create any actions you like, for example to assign a sword when the sword button is clicked. Do the same for the other custom functions for each of the buttons. Create the inventory button clicked function with a return type of string. Then add a debug log that will display the message in the console. Attach the UI script to the UI document. During play mode we can now click on each button to perform the correct action. We can see the logs within the console. I want to control the layout of the UI menu using the input system. I want only the left or right buttons to be accessible when I press left shoulder or right shoulder buttons on the gamepad. Open the input system actions asset and go to the UI action map. Add a new action of type button called show right buttons. For the first binding press listen and then press the right shoulder button on the gamepad and select it from the list. This is using a gamepad control scheme. Add another binding and press listen. Press E on the keyboard and select it. This is using the keyboard and mouse control scheme. Add another action called show left buttons and repeat the process. The first binding will be for the left shoulder on the gamepad and the second binding will be for the Q key on keyboard. Save the asset. In the UI script, add the input system namespace. Create an input action asset variable. In the onEnable method, add a function called button selection. Then find the action map of UI from the input actions and enable it. Run a function called input switch. 
In the onDisable method, disable the UI action map if this UI menu is switched off. Run a function called input switch disable. Create a function called button selection. Run a for loop for button set 2 and set enable to false for each button in button set 2. When enabled is false, they will be greyed out and you can't navigate to them or select them or click them. Then select the first button in set 1 by adding the command focus. This will highlight the button, allowing you to move from that point using keyboard or gamepad. Create a function called input switch. Remember this is being called from the on enable method. We will use an alternative way of listening for a button press. Access the input actions and find the action of show right buttons. When it is performed, meaning it is pressed and all interactions are met, add the data and subscribe to a function called right buttons. Do the same for show left buttons and subscribe to a function called left buttons. Create a function called input switch disable. This is run from the on disable method and will be performed as the menu is switched off. Access the input actions and find the action of show right buttons and use minus equals to unsubscribe from the right buttons function. Do the same for show left buttons. Create the left buttons function. This has a parameter of input action callback context, which is passed into a context variable. Add a for loop for the button set 2 and for each button in button set 2 change set enable to false, grey in them out. Add a for loop for button set 1 and for each button in button set 1 change set enable to true, allowing them to be accessed. Set the first button in button set 1 to be focused. Do the same for right buttons, but this time change button set 2 buttons set enabled to true and button set 1 buttons set enabled to false. Set the first button in button set 2 to be focused. Drag the input system actions asset into the input action slot of the UI script. During play mode you can navigate only the first set of buttons as set 2 is greyed out. Press right shoulder button on gamepad or E on keyboard to switch to the second set and now the first set is greyed out. Press left shoulder on gamepad or Q key on keyboard to switch back to the first set. You might want to take it further and hide the buttons instead of greying them out. In the UI script, change the set enable to style dot display equals display style none to turn off the buttons completely. In the left buttons and right buttons functions do the same, change set enable to either display style none to switch off the buttons or display style flex to switch on the buttons. During play mode, you can only see one set of buttons at a time. You can still click on them and run the correct function. And that brings us to the end of this video. We have looked at how to create code to navigate and click on UI toolkit buttons using the input system. In the next video, we will look at adding in-game input rebinding, which allows players to select their own input controls during gameplay. To find out more, click on the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.